Bolden. You ready? Welcome to the Success Code, where Roy Red provides interviews, discussions, strategies, and talks to help broaden your perspective on your road to cracking the Success Code. Success Code. Yo, so on this episode of the Success Coach, your boy, Roy Red, four-time best-selling author and your host of this show, we got, man, got my bro Omar Bolden, Super Bowl champ with the Broncos, Super Bowl 50, played for the Chicago Bears, went to Arizona State, just someone who I watch because he has a knack for taking ideas and something he wants to do and manifesting them quickly into the real world, so I'm going to ask him some questions on that on fitness, what he's doing these days. Let's see where he at. Let's bring Omar in. You ready? Welcome to the oh. Success Code, where Roy Red... Where'd he go? There he is. What up, O? Yo, what's the deal, Roy? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. First off, I want to just say thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we're live. We got about 12 people on right now, but they're going to still come in. They're going to be giving you a bunch of comments. I'm going to uh, filter in their questions, but I just want to start off. Tell us about uh, Omar, what you've done, and what you're doing today. Oh, man. Damn. I mean, I'm, I'm 31 years old. I feel like I've done done so much. But um, let's see. I'm, I'm from Ontario, California. Born or, or Not born and raised, but I was raised and grew up in Ontario. Outside. Um, I went to Arizona State out of high out of high school um, on a full ride, full of football scholarship. Um, I played pretty well there, um, and um, you know, earned my, myself uh, an opportunity to uh, to go to the combine, NFL combine, where I didn't participate. Um, and God just blessed me, and I was still fortunate enough to get to get drafted, you know, by the Denver Broncos in 2012 mm -hmm. in the fourth round, um, and. Uh, and I, I, I would say at that time in my life, that would that had been the first time I had been ser served a slice of humble pie in a long time. Yeah. You know, going to the to the NFL and um, it really, really being, I guess, uh, the man on um, every other team that I have been on uh, prior to that. You know, and then I get to the NFL and I'm full with a team full of everyone's the man, you know, and um you know, there's a lot of different other things that are involved as far as business goes. You know, you realize it's not it's no longer just a, a childhood game. Yeah. And, um, you know, and in order for me to kind of, you know, keep my place and, and, and a spot on the roster, you know, I had to do some things I really didn't want to do. Yeah. You know, um, but with that said, man, I was able to really learn from a lot of great players, yeah. you know, on just how, how not even just how to play the game, but just how to be a professional in life. You know, and unfortunately, my career came to an end um, after winning the Super Bowl. Um, really, before we won the Super Bowl, I didn't play in the Super Bowl. Um, so, you know, my career came to an end. And, uh, you know, a lot of things that I learned from players that I played with in Denver um, in particular, you know, really helped me transition outside of football to where I'm, I'm currently at now. Well, actually, before we even get to where I'm at now, you know, I spent some time um working with a startup company in New York, which was range. And that was, that was fashion. At one point I kind of thought I, I have a passion for fashion, but I thought I wanted to pursue it, yeah. you know? So I checked it I, you know, I, I gave it some, um, some real time. And I realized that wasn't really what I wanted to do. You know, I just enjoy being fresh. I don't really want to do the fashion side of business and cutting and sewing. That really wasn't my thing. Yeah. Um, but that kind of really sparked my entrepreneurial spirit, you know, at that time, I was living in New York right, after being um, released by Chicago. Mm -hmm. I moved back to L.A. after after working with that company for about four months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just at, at this point, I didn't know if my career was over. Mm -hmm. I was still kind of trying to get back into the league. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had to work out with Jacksonville, mm -hmm. failed the physical, which is something I had never done in my life. Yeah. You know, um, so I, 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 I was pretty I was at that point, I was OK to just let it go, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I decided to let football go and, you know, I dove into training, you know, the guy, uh, my personal trainer who was training me ended up getting a job at Stanford. So he took that job, moved to the Bay area. Okay. Um, and he, he kind of was mentoring me the whole time he was, uh, training me without even knowing we spent so much time together one-on-one -on -one. and, um, you know, I decided to get certified and start my own business, you know, when he left, um, a part of it too, cause he was, 
he was pretty convinced that he could kind of persuade a few of his clients to come my way. You know what I'm saying? So it could, it kind of initiated, you know, my, my, my business, you know, I didn't really have to go out and search for too many clients, you know? Um, so that was a, a huge blessing. Um, and you know, uh, since then, um, I had, I had the opportunity to sign with a, a supplement company. So I signed with muscle farm, um, which is, kind of how our relationship started and that's kind of where a lot of people see a lot of my videos today mm -hmm. you know my workout videos um we still have a straight a very good relationship um but i'm no longer an athlete i was an athlete for muscle farm for a year and a half um but i'm still i'm still connected to the brand um but i'm just not a sign, a sign athlete anymore um but i'm, I'm currently running my own tra personal training business obviously that's been uh that's been uh you know on hold because of COVID-19, yeah. um, unfortunately, but it's, it's something that we're all going through. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently um, running a lot of different other programs, um, one in particular, which is X2 with my partner, Emily. Mm -hmm. um, we got an online program going right now, which just allows people to get custom workouts in the home with using the equipment that they have, yeah. uh, which w we, we will uh, get to the bottom of when we have our consultation. Yeah. And then they get a, a weekly lifetime coaching uh, FaceTime from me or Emily um, every week um, until the quarantine is over. When the quarantine is over, it'd be every other week. So it'd be bi-weekly. Um, so yeah, that's really what I'm up to now. On the other side of things too, you know, I just love creating like just fun content for my YouTube, my personal YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, my joint YouTube with my, with my girlfriend Candice and just, just the fun shit on TikTok, you know, like I, that's definitely the way. So if you're not on that, you know, you're sleeping, you're kidding yourself. Oh man, I'm asleep. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get on there. I'm going to get on there. So it's crazy how you were talking about like how you know you were served some humble pie when you got in the league because you know we went to the same barbershop uh dimensions back in the day and i remember yeah. i remember like there's like a epic story about like how some dude was in there getting his hair cut and he started talking and he was like yeah all right we're gonna see y'all i think he played for don lugo or something like that yeah and the first play of the game you took it to the crib on him and then you just ran on the side. Was like, I want my free haircuts. I think, uh, uh, what's his name, Chris? Kurt, I who yeah. cut your hair? Was Kurt, like, I give you a no, free Kurt, haircut. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt was cutting my hair. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, well, Kurt, I want my Kurt free was haircuts. My hair. So that's a legendary story that me and my bro Cam be telling people all the time. Be like, because they would talk about that in the barbershop. Um, so when you go to the league and then everybody is on that level, how do you transition? And especially just in my opinion, I knew you could do so much more. You're so athletic, smart. How do you navigate going from being that dude and then having to do things that maybe you don't want to do in order to fit in so you can earn your spot? Yeah, um, for me, for me, it wasn't that tough um, for a couple reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. Um See, I, I when I got drafted, I wasn't a hundred percent healthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was still I was still recovering from my ACL injury. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, because I wasn't at full strength, because I wasn't, I didn't feel like the Omar that I knew I could be. Yeah. I was kind of like, okay, okay, all right, whatever, you know. And then also too, I so fortunate to to come to a team where I, I get to sit alongside and play alongside guys like champ bailey yeah you know uh tracy porter yeah. uh chris harris jr mm -hmm. you know like these were the three starting corners when i got there yeah you know um tracy has been a pro bowler and all pro and champ is obviously we know who champ bailey is he's a hall of famer and chris harris if chris harris continues doing what he's doing now he'll be a, a walking hall of famer as well you know so you know having those three proven veteran guys in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't I wasn't too upset, you know, and, and the transition wasn't too hard because I was eager to learn, yeah. you know, like I, I'm never, I've never been in a situation or at least I, I, I don't ever want to put myself in a situation to where I feel like I can't learn and absorb information from those who are, have done it before and have come before me. So um, in that sense, you know, um, the transition wasn't too bad, but I still wanted to be a star, yeah. you know, I still wanted to be that guy, you know, so mm -hmm. it was just like whatever I could do, however I could try to make an impact and make a play, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I knew that we had Peyton Manning as our quarterback, we was going to get primetime games. Yeah. So it was like, yo, like, okay, I don't necessarily want to do 
miss, I don't want to play special teams, but shit, since I got to, I know we playing on Sunday night. I know we playing Monday night. <laughs> Let me go make a play. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So like, I kind of just flipped it like that. And, and I, I just told myself, you know, eventually some point, you know, my opportunity is going to come. Yeah. You know, I didn't know when it was going to come. Um, and uh, unfortunately, when it came uh, for me, you know, I, I, I caught the injury bug, you know. So, you know, the opportunity for me to really truly compete for a starting role on defense came my fourth year in my deal. And um, and the, the third preseason game, I, I got injured. Mm-hmm. I came back for week one mm-hmm. uh, against the against the Baltimore Ravens in, in the first first game of the season and got injured at the end of the like the literally like the last play of the game. Yeah. Spent like five games, spent like five games out, came back, played for five games, mm-hmm. then got injured again against San Diego. Yeah. You know, spent the rest of the the rest of the season on the sideline, then got into the playoffs mm-hmm. um and got injured got injured after um um a really dope what actually my last play my last play i've ever played football i got injured on so um yeah you know so unfortunately you know it it, things didn't and that's just how it happens you know you play a violent game like football Mm -hmm. hockey rugby you know things like that are just they're unpredictable you know what i'm saying the injury rate is a hundred percent you know what i'm saying and sometimes you just happen to catch the short end of the stick and that's just how it happened for me Mm -hmm. you know just quick just thinking about when you were talking about football and it being a violent sport just, just, I just had this question real quick. Uh, I don't know if you and Candace ever spoke about it, but would you let y'all kids play football? Uh, yeah, I definitely would. I will. I wouldn't encourage it though. Mm. Just because it's. I would. I wouldn't what? encourage it. Uh-huh. I, I, it's just. It's. It's so violent, and if you want to be a star playing sports. There's a few other ones where the money is just as good, you know, and th- the longevity of the game is is much further, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, so like, I, yeah, I mean, but at the same time, though, you know, I mean, you know, by the time I have kids, I don't have, we don't have kids yet. So by the time I have kids, like, and they hear that their dad played in the NFL, they're gonna be like, what? No way, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be, I'm gonna be a, a completely different person by the time they're able to understand what I do for a living. On a you know? level, as a pro and something else, uh, and something else, yeah. and something else. They're like when when they look back, when 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 my kids look back, they're like, damn, I didn't even know my dad did that stuff type of stuff. So, um, but I do love the game of football, so we will be watching it, you know. But so if they want to play, it's it's completely up to them. You know, I, I, I kind of get that from my parents. They really my parents let me do whatever I wanted to do. You know, if I had a passion for something, they let me pursue it. Yeah. And that's how I want to be supported for my children, too. Yeah. Yo, man, Mr. Bowling be in the barbershop kicking knowledge, man. Everybody be quiet when we start. Out. <laughs> yeah. So I just know that you came from that. So now I see uh, why you are how you are. Um, so reinvention. It seems like you mastered that. You stopped playing football, went, did the clothing thing. You, you stay fresh, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a few pages I follow. I see what they wearing, and I just flat out steal it. You one of them. And then you went. <laughs> uh-huh. it's, all, it's all love, bro. Then you went into fitness and started doing fitness. And when it, I, my dad's a trainer. So when it comes to fitness, I know and see a lot. So I know when someone's good in a hot second, and a lot of it on IG is bad and i can tell when you just showing off just to get that attention and then when you really training and doing the fundamentals and really doing stuff i'm like okay he knows what he's doing right there so in reinventing yourself what is your process in doing that because so many people struggle with that most people wouldn't have been able to go through that that would have sent them into a depression or or so and so how do you say okay this is what i want to do and what is your steps to reinventing yourself like that? Well, I, I would definitely love uh, to quote uh, the late, great Kobe Bryant on this. And I'm kind of paraphrasing, but, you know, you got to be able to find your passion. You know, like one thing about an athlete, when an athlete's career ends, it's almost like that person dies and he's reborn again, you know. And he's got to refine another passion that keeps him fueled and energized and eager uh, to get up and chase it, you know, yeah. and the training for me, it kind of just happened naturally just because mm-hmm. I care about how I look, my fitness level and my physique, you know, 
and then it just began it it, it, it it turned into well how can i help other people you know because you know my mantra and my brand is about positive living is spread love you know and uplifting you know the community and the people i'm around you know so um if i can no longer touch millions and thousands of people from you know the football field well how else can i reach those people because i know i'm here to do something i'm, I'm not here to just touch one person you know I, I feel like my my voice is much louder than that you know my presence is much louder than that so you know um for now you know it was like how can i make my friends around me better how can i make uh people who just have a desire to change better you know and it's not just physical, it's mental too, you know? And that's like one of the main things I'm, I, I, to, I coach with my, my clients yeah. is about the mental aspect of everything, yeah. you know? You're like, it's like you train the mind, the body will follow hands down, you know? So. Facts, facts. All right, let's transition to this fitness, baby. Let's get into it. It's what I, this, you know, I love fitness. I just, I just can't train. I don't have the patience for it. I just don't have the patience for it. But mm -hmm. let's say, God forbid something happened where you, okay, COVID-19, let's say you had to stay in the house and you had no workout equipment and you just said, forget it. I'm going to stop working out, even though that would never happen. And you, and you lost all your gains. What would you do step-by-step step from zero to be like, all right, now I'm going to get back to get your gains back. And, and what process do you take your clients through when they have fitness goals and because who was it? I think it was uh, I think it was Chris Barry hit me up was like, yo, tell me how to get fit. And I was like, well, what's your goal? He's like, I want to be like Omar. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> Omar is a pro athlete. Like, you got to chill. <laughs> like, that's like, <laughs> ain't me any of us getting on that level, bro. But what do you do? How do you help your clients get them goals down and uh, do what they do? Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a couple of things. Um one of the obviously is the mental aspect, right? Getting them to to show up and commit to what we're doing, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, I show up every day, but if, if they don't show up or if they're not just committed, then it's not going to work, yeah. you know. So I think I think the first part is the mental aspect of it, right? And just knowing that we're we're in this together and we we have uh, our goals are aligned, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think the ne the next part will be nutrition, you know, just talking about what their daily intake is like and you know, what their, what their goal is, you know, so we can determine on how we want to uh, consume food. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and what we need to eliminate out of our diet. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing is depending on the fitness level, you know, mm -hmm. running them through an assessment and then building a program out for them. You know, I think every, everyone is different. Everyone has different goals. And, you know, some guys want to be buff. Some guys want to be cut. Some people want to be explosive. Some people want to, some people want to be like bodybuilders and some people want to train like athletes, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it just all depends on the client's needs. You know, the client, I, I think, is always right. If you're in the service industry, the client is always right. Yeah. You know, so, like, whatever the client wants, that's what you do. Yeah. Okay. And just touching on nutrition real quick. Um, and it's a little bit off topic, but let's talk vegan. Because I mm -hmm. say that mm -hmm. vegan or plant-based is, is a great diet if you know what you're doing. So, what... Being plant-based, what do you have to make sure you consume so that you're still able to turn up the way you do? Uh, I just, just, just the same thing you need to consume if you're not plant-based, you know, okay. proteins, you know, daily fiber, uh, making sure I'm hydrated, mm -hmm. getting my fruits, mm -hmm. my fruits in, and, uh, I'm making sure I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get five to six meals in a day. You know, that the only thing that changes is that I just eliminated meat and dairy products, mm -hmm. you know? Like everything else has stayed the same for me. Like I still eat big portion. I still eat the, the same amount of portions that um, I was eating prior to not eating uh, meat. You know, um, I'm still eating the same amount of times. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just I I just feel like I'm filling my body up with the what's the word I want to use? Earth. The purest the purest form mm -hmm. of energy and protein. Mm -hmm. You know. So without without it being stepped on, I'm like I'm going straight to the I'm going straight to the source, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I always say all we're doing is extracting photons from the food, from which we get our energy from the sun. And what holds photons better than than vegetables? That photosynthesis, right? And so, um, yep. Uh, what was I going to ask you? Yeah, do you still eat all your meals within a certain amount of time? Because I remember when I saw you at Math Michael Blackston's party. 
you were explaining to me how you were intimate and fasting at that time. Do you still do that with your vegan? No, nah, I don't. I haven't. I haven't really monitored my times of eating mm-hmm. in probably like six to eight months. Okay. Um, because I'm plant based and I eat a lot of fruits. I mean, I'm a lot of fruits and a lot of veggies. I really eat whenever I want. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like if I'm hungry, I'm I'm gonna eat, fam. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, it's just it's just that simple. And you know, my goals are a lot different too. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I was intermittent fasting, um, you know, I had a desire to be extremely lean. You know, I don't really have that you desire solid, today. Bro, you, you know, solid. I tap you on the shoulder. I was like, God damn. So yeah, man. Um, I'm I'm not doing that right now. Though. I and I eat literally whenever I want. Like and obviously, I'm pretty sure a lot of people's schedules are kind of all over the place right now because of what we're dealing with. But I mean, I'm I, like last night at eight o'clock. I ate at two a.m. in the morning. Yeah. You know. So, um, but I also worked out like a fucking animal this morning, uh, this afternoon. So, yeah, yeah I'm the same, you know same way. I love food too much. I'm I'll just rather work hard. I just rather work harder. I would rather just work harder. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise my clients to do that because they're not me. You know, right? But like, if I understand, I understand myself. And I understand how to push myself past, you know, my uh, my threshold mm-hmm. and get what I need out of my body. Mm-hmm. So we got a couple. We got a few uh, comments in here. We got Vic. He said, "Whoop whoop." Uh, we got someone who whoop. said, "How do you stay disciplined? How do you? What is your secret to staying disciplined?" Uh, being consistent in your discipline. It's not a secret. Woo. There's not a secret. There's no secret. It's just you, you got to do it. Whatever you you just do it. Yeah. You just do it. You just be consistent. You be consistent, consistently disciplined yeah. in your routine, you know, and yeah. that's it. Um, yeah, I, I think sometimes sometimes we we people, us as people, we can kind of make it more complicated than what it is, you know, and it's I don't think it ever has to be that complicated unless we're actually, you know, dealing with, you know, um, specific numbers, you know, but man, if you, if you want to, if you have something you're chasing, you know, chase it every day. Like myself, for for, for instance, like myself, like I really want to get nice on this, on this guitar that I have. Right. And um, I know the reason why I'm not nice because I pick it, I pick it up every other four or five days. Yeah. All right, so so this week I made it some, I made it a goal. To, I was like, all right, you know, this week I'm just gonna try. I'm just gonna start with one week. I'm gonna pick it up every day this week. Yeah. Right. So I'm going on third today. Will be my fourth day picking it up. Mm-hmm. Right. And next week, now I'm gonna try to. Next week I'll go try to go for 14 days. Yeah. And then next week I'll try to go for 21 days. You know, and just try to build that that habit, and then the consistency becomes a habit. Yeah. You know, and now now my discipline picks up. So. Um, yeah, I hope that answers their question. Yo, that that's that's a dope distinction because people ask me that all the time, and there's areas in our lives that we're not disciplined. Just just because of how my dad fed me, this is how this is what I'll always be disciplined in because of how he raised me. But that that was a great distinction. All right, let's talk about uh, X two O. So X two O fitness program that you guys been doing for a while now, but right now. You guys are really honing in and helping people stay fit, especially during this Rona. And everybody's hitting me up for home workouts. And obviously, I don't, I don't really know the home workout, body weight workouts. I'm lucky. I, you know, I go to my dad's gym. I unlock it. I work out. I can leave. But um, um, talk about X2 and um, how people can get on that and get these home workouts popping. Yeah, so um, X2 is a program that Emily and I started uh, a little over a year ago, and we've been doing, we've been having our workouts on um, a platform called Playbook, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we recently launched a separate program uh, that is more personalized and customized to each client, um, specifically during this time right now during the quarantine. Um, And the program is called One Plus One. So it's X2 One Plus One program. It comes with custom workouts um, and weekly life uh, life coaching FaceTime call. So every week we'll, we'll hop on a call for 30 minutes. We'll tap in. We'll chop it up. And um, I know some people may think, you know, it may be more so about the workouts. But for me personally and Emily as well, you know, it's more so about the mental, you know, just really tapping in and seeing how everyone is doing, you know, because I, I – 
I, I really think the, the, the workouts are the easy part once the mind is right, you know? The mind is right. The mind is ready to work and ready to receive and ready to endure like strenuous shit. The body will be too, you know? So that's really what we focus on too. So if anybody's ever interested, um, right now we got a special going on. Um, it's $50 off, you know? So all you gotta do is head over to X2 Workouts uh, Instagram page. And then the link is in the bio. You click the link and it's pretty self-explanatory from there. Okay. Okay, and I have you guys um, on my end. I have they they can see the website right here and everything, and you guys working out. Um, one thing I'm noticing is that this this fresh optimized gear that I've been waiting on for a minute. You know, what I'm saying what's what's going on with yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we I had to take a step back just because um, it, it was taking too much. I, I, it's, it was really hard to run a tr full on training business and then start a clothing line, an athletic apparel line from the ground up. Right. So I had to take some steps back. I, I initially wanted to roll out an entire line. Um, and just from from talking from um, people that I respect and admire in the clothing industry, you know, um, you know, I've kind of decided to have a new approach instead of having a line. I'm just going to drop a couple items. Um, and I have some tanks and some hood, hoodie tanks that I'm about to shoot very soon okay. um, and get those available up for purchase. So um, they'll be I mean, by the time we can all get outside, they'll be ready for everyone to um, to, to, to support the brand um, and get fresh and fly in. OK. All right. All right. We got a couple minutes left. Um, this is kind of the traditional question of uh, this show is. What is success to you? I know it's different for all of us. For me, it's lifestyle. Um, everybody gives me a different answer. In your opinion, what is success to you and what is a perfect life to you? I think success for me is is one, first and foremost, being happy. Yeah. Right. And um, having financial freedom. Right. A lot of people will say that money isn't everything. Um mm -hmm. But freedom is everything and money buys you freedom, you know, so, um, you know, that's that's kind of that's kind of like been my mindset for like the past seven to eight years, you know, and that's really the goal, the mission I'm on to provide or to create that type of success for myself. So to be happy and to have financial freedom and it happy comes with, you know, obviously good health, mm -hmm. you know, strong family backbone, you know, and a good not a good, a great core group of friends, mm -hmm. you know? So I think all, when, when I define happiness and success, when I, or when we say success, that's what falls under success for me. So happiness, you know, um, health, financial freedom, and healthy relate relationships. Hey, and th talk, thinking about happy, bro, where you get that energy from? <laughs> energy be on fleek from, I from 4 a.m.? <laughs> It, it, hey, yeah, I mean, it's, that's no facade, too, man. You know, sometimes, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, we used to hear this um, um, quite often in, in the league, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to come through with some false enthusiasm until you get some real enthusiasm, Ooh. right? Mm -hmm. So, right, so sometimes you got to just kind of fake the funk until you actually get into mode, you know? And sometimes, sometimes, like, if I come on my phone and I got hella energy, mm -hmm. and, or I may be talking to, to my audience. It's not really me talking to my audience. Sometimes it's me, to be honest, 90% of the time it's me talking to me, Yeah. you know? And I'm just sharing it out loud with you guys, yeah. you know? Um. But, you know, my dad, my dad is just a really upbeat doc guy. My mom is, is a really happy individual. So it's kind of just my household, you know? Yeah, well, that's- my upbringing. That's actually yeah. a real thing. You know, I work with athletes with mindset and, um, one of the ways to we, we we call it your mindset ceiling. One of the ways to change your mindset ceiling is to change your physiology. So if you feeling sad, yep. if you pick your head up and smile, literally the physiology of doing that, what we call fake it till you make it. But really, you ain't changes how you feel and it literally releases and make you happy. Uh, got some comments coming in. Somebody said, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. all Somebody said that part. Uh, all the parts, everything he said was gems. All right, so we're gonna take it out. Oh, we got a few seconds. Let everybody know where they could follow you. Um, again, uh, plug in, yeah, man, to again, and then we'll roll out. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, Roy. Thank you for having me on, man. No I appreciate thank you, you using you, your platform. Mm -hmm. 
um, for, for, for the good things in life, man, and just uplifting our community, our people, man, and just shedding light on people doing um, what the fuck they do. Um, so big ups to you, bro. Okay. But yeah, you guys can find me on Instagram at omar.bolden. You can find me on Twitter at Omar Bolden. You can find me on TikTok at omar.bolden. And you can find me on YouTube, just as Omar Bolden. Um, you can find more info about the custom workouts and the life coaching at X2 Workouts um, on the handle as well as x2workouts.com. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, those are all my platforms where you can find me. Oh, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook too. You can find me on Facebook too, right. Omar Bolden. One. People still be on there? I only and, go uh, in there to talk mess every now and then. Yeah, I, I pop in every once in a while, you know. Indeed, indeed. All right, brother. Thank you for. Oh, yo, y'all got to go check out the YouTube. So kind of what I do is I, I look at your story every day and then you got a good way of posting like something hilarious from you and Candace or you got a good way of hooking me. And then I swipe up, go look at the YouTube. So y'all got to go check out his YouTube. It's hilarious. Good content. Yes, please. Yeah. Please. Please and, check um, out that YouTube. The, the check out check out my personal YouTube, Omar Bolden, and check out the joint YouTube with Candace and I and my girlfriend, The Comar Show, man. Matter of fact, we got an episode dropping. I think it may. Uh, y'all, I don't hey, know if we're gonna get it up tonight, but if it's if it's up tonight, it's gonna be up tomorrow. Honestly, sure. bro, you you for sure. The Comar, y'all gotta bring more content. You know what I'm saying? With the Comar show. Hey, you know, you know, you know, you know what's so tough is trying to juggle my I'm career, her career, yeah. and then our joint. You know, yeah. that's 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 just like the the struggle that we're trying to find that balance, and it's just so hard. But we're trying though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We putting our best foot forward on that. So we know we know um, the people want more content from us. So um, you know, our, our goal is to get it to them. That's for sure. Bad y'all working. Somebody says salute. Thank you. All right, old. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you, brother. I hope you guys enjoyed this show as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Till next time, always remember to be yourself. Peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace, bro.